So it is about 2 a.m. here in Israel. Um, we're in Jerusalem now and we're getting ready to leave because we are doing a sunrise hike this morning to Masada. And I am so tired. It is 4.30 here at Masada and we will be taking the snake path up. It's super dark. You can see the lights in the very distance. That is actually Jordan across the Dead Sea. The border is in the middle of the Dead Sea. Um, so now you can see like the earliest rays of sunlight. So now we gotta get going on the path. Just a quick view of what it looked like hiking at 4 a.m. It was so dark and it's a lot of stairs. We're up here climbing and I'm so tired already, but that's okay because it's totally worth it. The view is absolutely beautiful. I feel like people who hike pretend like this is easy. It's really not. I don't like how hard this is, but the views are worth it. Are you all right? Also, the rocks are super slippery and easy to trip on. low-key dying right now but that's okay sorry it's totally worth it um because it's beautiful but it's really hard definitely recommend getting up though because i can imagine this is like a thousand times worse if it's sunny outside if you come here during the day take the cable car don't punish yourself like this <laughs> okay Cool. Okay. I feel deceased, Alrighty. but that's okay. Not a lot. Like, is this no big deal? You know, mentally prepared, you know? Yeah. Whatever you want. So the cable cards don't run in the morning. So if you want the sunrise view, you have to do the snake trail. Yeah. Which goes all the way. Not up. Your video. And it's quite hard. Yeah, I have a snake card. Just about fell there. It's a little bit sketchy on some of these rocks. Like literally look at this. So there's some rocks falling now, which is a little bit scary because you don't want to get hit. I feel like we've come so freaking far, way down there. It's where we started, um, but we're still not there. There's still the staircase and I feel a little bit dead now. But that's okay. We press on. We will get there. That's what I'm telling myself. A little engine that could. So here we're finally to where basically the cable car takes you. And we hiked all the way from back down there. And this gentleman is walking a lot faster than I was. <laughs> Why bother? Why bother Why indeed? Bother conquering it this high up, we're never gonna come up wow. here. I look really red. So we're up here on the watchtower, waiting for the sun to rise over the Dead Sea. Honestly, I'm just proud of myself for completing this hike because it was really hard. Um, but I'm up here with a lot of little children who probably also completed the hike faster than I did, but that's okay. Comparison is a thief of joy. I'm getting up so early to come out here. It's not something that I would normally do. It was really out of my comfort zone, but it really is worth it. And frankly, maybe I'll start doing this more when I travel. So it is 5.37 here in Israel. I'm so happy to be here. Um, the sunrise was incredible. I actually FaceTimed my family back in the United States so that they could really see it and experience it too. I'm like kind of blind right now because it was so bright. I'm just seeing spots. I know you're not supposed to look at the sun, but I definitely did. So 
this is where the person who would have kept the palace for um, Herod when he wasn't here would have lived. And then during the Jewish revolt, um, actually uh, several families lived in this area. Wow. So if you lived there during these times, you would have had this incredible view um, of your window, basically. And you just walk out and you could look at the Dead Sea. Maybe they watched the sunrise here too. So here we have a model of what this sort of would have looked like. Um, just, it was an amazing feat of architecture at the time. You can see in the rooms where some of these columns that remain here would have been, um, what it would have looked like at the time. And to think that you know, some of the structure it doesn't look like that much now, but the structure survived 2,000 years. So according to Josephus, 960 people committed suicide here, basically. Um, really, you know, they would kill each other, and then the last man was the one to commit suicide, rather than fall to the Romans, who would have come up to attack them from down there. Obviously, this is a fortress that's extremely high, and it was, you know, able to be defended for a long period of time. But eventually the Romans were able to come up here. They actually only found 28 bodies during the excavation, many of which are believed to be Romans. So they have not found necessarily archaeological evidence to back up Josephus's claims. But there's also not archaeological evidence to say that his claims are not true. So really it kind of is a mystery. As I walk through here, you know, what I'm really starting to be struck by is the scale of this building. Obviously, we've seen how high it is up on the mountain. So to build something this large was such an incredible feat. It would be hard today. While we're here, I do also want to mention that there is an amazing book called The Dove Keepers. If you like to read, if you like historical fiction, it basically deals with the women of Masada and their experiences here. Um, and the survivors, you know, who Josephus records surviving. Again, there's no really records of what actually happened or any of the names of the people, but it does go through and kind of fictitiously go, you know, talk about what life may have been like for these people. It is kind of an R-rated book, so keep that in mind if you are, you know, sensitive to that sort of thing that delves into sexuality a lot um, of the women. But it really is an amazing story and I really enjoyed it. So we just found this little trail that said Northern Palace this way. And it actually is quite the trail itself. But I love the views here. It's amazing. Um, very big fan of it. Um, like I said, desert vibes. Really enjoying them. Um, also, this side of the mountain is shaded, which I really appreciate too. Um, not looking forward to this walk down. I don't know, walking downhill scares me. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, so like this path, that staircase, and then going over here. Um, and again, just views like nobody's business. Okay, so it says that this is the best preserved part of the entire complex. And I definitely agree with that. It looks amazing. Um, so if you come here, you should definitely go down this weird little staircase even though it's like a long walk because it really provides you this amazing perspective. Okay, I'm just gonna give you a vantage point here where you can see this trail. But again, it's so worth it because you get all of these columns and a lot of the paint is still here. And you can look up and just kind of really get a perspective again of the scale. So now we're going to see the mosaics, which are in this building. And Kayla is leaving me there. She's been here before. She's the expert guide. <laughs> so here's what remains of the mosaics. It's hard to imagine the grandeur that this palace would have had when it was first built. This one here is nearly complete. I just stole that exact line from Kayla.
now on the walk down and I was 100% right. I think this is worse, honestly. <laughs> My thighs. My thighs. I better be in good shape after this trip, honestly. I'm gonna be mad if I'm not. I've come to a more flat portion of the trail. But I'm still using the handrail. Honestly, it makes me feel more secure while I'm walking down. Don't feel any shame about how you have to hike, if you have to take breaks, if you have to use handholds, if you have to sit on your butt and like literally scoot down, which I've had to do on other hikes. Wasn't necessary for this one, but it has been necessary on other hikes. Like, don't be afraid to do what you need to do. You know, your journey can take your own amount of time. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure in hiking, especially if you're with a group, to like keep the pace. But sometimes that's not really what you're made to do. Okay, here is kind of Masada in the day as we where we hiked up. Um, this is the snake trail again, and it was rough, but it's doable. Um, so definitely consider it worth doing, just hard. But if you want to take the more simple route, take the cable car um, and just, you know, don't go up for the sunrise. Please don't follow my mistake of not wearing sunscreen. Bad decision. The sun is extremely harsh here. Okay, so the view of where we hiked all the way from the bottom to the top, um, now in the light. I'm honestly kind of glad that I couldn't see how tall this mountain was. Uh, you can kind of see it here where it snakes up. It's called the snake path. Like up, 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 up. I'm glad I couldn't see it and I just had to start and just go. I don't know why on the entire walk down. I just had an Olivia Rodrigo song, Brutal, stuck in my head. Um, no shade to her, but I did have it and it just kind of cracks me up. And I really don't even know it that well, so I just have like that like main thing, like where it's brutal out here when she says that. <laughs> and I'm very thankful that I did it, but I'm also thankful to be done and drink some water and eat my sandwich that I packed for myself. According to Josephus, um, there's a fire ant. Interesting, sorry. I'm ADHD, I'm sorry. Literally.